Um, so I'm going to start by showing um, how we can create a logic app in Azure, because then we will create a, a connector for it. So basically, what I'm do, what I'm going to do here is to add a new resource, and then I will look for logic app. So it's pretty much it. You can create this logic app. So basically, it's it's talking about how can we design workflows here and do things. So when we are creating a logic app, we basically need to define a name for this. So I'm gonna put demo uh, logic app two. I'm gonna select the resource group, and then I'm can I can uh, enable an analytic here. It will create some um, application inside thing, so it's good to enable if you want to to track things on our your logic app. Um, so this will create a basically a resource here in Azure. I'm going to show you already a logic app working just to while this resource is being created. So here in Azure, I have one logic app called Demo Azure Week 1. And then I'm going to go to the designer, logic apps designer. And basically, this is uh, how we can create a logic app. The logic app is basically starting with a trigger. So we have a trigger here. And if you see, it's pretty simple and pretty easy to understand what is going on. So something is happening and this logic app is starting by when an HTTP request is received. So we have a trigger to start this logic app. So in this case, our logic app will start when an HTTP request is, um, is received. And then we have a lot of configuration that we can do in this case. And we have a lot of different actions that I'm doing here. So I'm submitting a new order, I'm getting items. And what is these uh, boxes here? These boxes are the connections or the actions that we are doing using the connectors. So basically, when we go to a logic cap designer, uh, we can create actions and we can create parallel branches and then put different actions to run in parallel. But basically, when we are adding an action, we have all the connectors that I, I talked about. So if we choose, for example, Twitter, so I'm going to show you guys that we can select different connectors. So Twitter, we can have, uh, I think Facebook, it's still here. So Facebook, um, I have SQL Server, I have uh, Salesforce. So we are talking about things that are Microsoft things and things that are not Microsoft things. Uh, let me see if I can see Salesforce here. So I have a lot of different things. And in the first uh, uh, box here, we can see all the connectors or we can see a lot of connectors that are available. So all of these are connectors available for you to use. And then when you select a connector, you can see all the actions for this connector, all the actions that are available for this connector. So for example, uh, talking about Twitter, let me select Twitter, and then I can see all the actions available. I can post a tweet, I can search tweets, I can get my followers. And how is this working right now? Basically, when we are adding a connector, uh, this will try to connect to the service um, through our username and password or a key that I can uh, create for an API or something like that. So. Basically, we need to check uh, for each connector that we want to use, how is the, the authentication of this connector and how we can connect to this, um, this in this case. So for example, in Twitter, we are doing this using the username and password, but we have a lot of other connectors that are using um, 
uh, an API key or something like that. So it depends on each connector. Uh, so when we are basically talking about uh, connectors, let me see if the resource is already here. Yeah. Okay, so let me check. I will create the, the new logic app from scratch. Uh, demo. Let me search here. Demo logic cap 2. And then it will go to the logic app designer. And this is uh, basically when we are starting from scratch. So it's basically saying to me, okay, Douglas, there is a lot of, there are a lot of uh, triggers that you can already use. So I have a lot of templates that I can use here to create my logic app. So for example, um, in, using the recurrence, delete old Azure blobs. So we have a lot of templates that we can use. So I can select productivity, I can select blockchain, I can select security. So you can do a lot of things. For example, you can automate the process of creating a, a user in your environment. So if in your company you need to create the, the Azure AD user, and then after that you need to create the user in the SAP and create the user in, in other different places and other uh, different uh, applications. You can create a, an automation process here. And then when uh, the user fill a form and then submit this form, it will go to an, an approval. And then after this uh, approval get done, uh, we'll create the user in the Azure AD, we'll create the user in SAP, we'll create the user on Salesforce and everything else in just one process. So this is a good example of uh, the leverage that we can uh, do by creating a large cap. So you can automate the whole process using this thing. Um, I'm going to create a, a large cap from, from blank just to show you guys how it, this works. And then when we are creating a logic app for the first time, we need to first select the trigger that we want to use. So we have a lot of different connectors to use. And for each connector, we can create some, uh, we can uh, select which trigger uh, will, be, will be used. For example, um, I can use the Azure DevOps, and then I have some triggers here. When a work item is created, start this logic cap, or when a build completes, start this uh, logic cap. But then uh, one good thing is that we can also create our, our own request. So you can also create your API from here. So instead of creating an API in, in .NET Core or in Node.js, you can create this structure here, like using this request, and then you can request for from some parameters, and then you will receive these parameters in your logic app and start doing something. And this is the example that I want to, to show you guys. So we will use this uh, trigger called request, uh, and then we have this when a HTTP request is received. And then basically what we is, is, uh, is doing right now, it's basically we can create a structure that I want to receive, in this case, I want to receive um, an item, and these will be. This is just an example, so I can have, for example, a new order, and then I can receive an ID, and I can receive some description, and then when I use this JSON structure or this JSON sample, it will create the the JSON schema for my HTTP request. So basically, this is helping me to create this uh, action. And then I'm going to create a new step here. And I will create, for example, an Azure DevOps. I will use the Azure DevOps to create a new work item. So in this example, I'm calling the logic apps sending some parameters as item, ID, and description. And then I will create some uh, a work item in my Azure DevOps. So I can select uh, 
the account name, the project name. And if you can see here, we are basically just selecting things. We are not uh, doing any code. We are just selecting things. And then a good thing that we have is, remember that I talked about uh, the actions and the outputs of each action that we can use on the on the logic app, it's the same for flow. So in this example, we can use dynamic content in each one of the, the connectors that we have here and the actions that we have here. And we can get parameters and this dynamic content from other places. So in this case, the connector that I have, the action that I have when an ATP request is received has two outputs the item and the description. And then I can use this in my actions. So I can send some parameters from one place to another by basically using this dynamic content. So with the dynamic content, we can send some parameters or outputs from one connector to another. This is really good because then in this case, I'm receiving some data and then I'm passing this data to another connector to be used. So I can use the item, for example, and the description, I can put the description. Uh, also, another good thing that we have here, it's uh, the expressions. We have a lot of uh, pre-built pre um, functions here, so I can convert to int, I can convert to float, I can do math functions, I can do date functions. So there are a lot of expressions that you can use. So basically I just created a, a workflow here that will receive some data and do some action. I will save this logic app here. And then once I saved, uh, an HTTP post URL was generated here. This is the endpoint for my logic app, and then I can copy. I will just test it using Postman. So we can use this to request or to execute some actions. So I can put here, select post, and then I will put uh, the body will be the, the same structure that I asked it when I was creating the logic app. So I'm asking for an item, that are that is string. I, I'm asking for an ID that is integer, and then I am asking for a description that is also a string. So I'm basically creating the same structure. The item will be a new task to be done. The description will be this is the description. And the ID will be one. And then basically in Postman, I can just send it this action. Uh, this just returned it accepted. So probably my logic apps already ran. So I can check here the executions. So I'm going to refresh. And I can see that there are a uh, history here that uh, I can see what happen in this execution. So this is a good thing also because we can check uh, what or which data we received. So we received these three data here, structure, and then what happened. And if something goes wrong, we can also see what happened. So this is good, really good. So if I go to my Azure DevOps, I can see that there is uh, a new item here that was created automatically. So this is good because I didn't create anything by code. I didn't do anything uh, using any uh, programming language and anything else. Was just using some logic and some connectors that are already available for me. So this is really good. 